Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 118. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome. If you're new here, say hi down below. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews and we talk about various keto topics. And every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is TwoCrazyKetos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. So, jingle bones, jingle, jingle bones, bones <laughs> jingle in my cup. Happy Christmas. It's, it is not Christmas in July yet. It's June, but we still have our discounted coffee that we're going through. And yeah, it's Jingle Bones this week. Oh. <laughs> Delicious. Now, I mean, I know it's not Christmas in July yet, but don't forget, next week is Prime Day. Which How I'm excited. I'm super excited about. We've got Are a great you? video coming out later on in the week about all the things that I think you should be looking for on Prime Day. I know some people gave some suggestions last week, like looking for air fryers and pressure cookers, all things that go on sale on Prime Day. Are you saying that people aren't just looking for silly hats and costumes like I look for on Prime Day? No. No? No. <laughs> just... Hey, we have Head to get day. through this one. We are heading on a five-day camping trip tomorrow. We're going up to meet Lori. And so, like, so I don't excited. have eight hours to edit this video. So whatever you say is going in. Oh, so, man. like, don't say balls, balls too many times or anything like that. I can't even make any promises. I am so nervous. Do I have everything I need for five days? Because it's not just me and you, but I also want to make sure we have everything for our children yes. who are going with us. Yeah, John, Paul, and Michelle are going camping with us. It's a double date <laughs> camping trip, but their first time campers in an RV. Yeah. They've done the tent they've thing. They've rented one. But they've they rented see if one. they like this. And I know, I really want them to like it because that means that they'll want to hang out more with us <laughs> because we can do it together. So I have to make sure I pack everything to have super fun. Okay, so they're in their late 20s. Yeah. Like we don't need to be a mom I'm to a totally, five-year-old. I'm totally in touch with what a 20-year-old would be into, <laughs> right? How are the TikToks, <laughs> right? I'll mom it up. I will okay. mom up this camping trip. Now, as far as our live streams this week, because we are doing the extra live streams for the movie, I don't know if we're going to be able to do one this week between now and Thursday. We will have our regular live stream, which is on Thursday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but or Eastern Time, depending on when you're watching right. this. But uh, the, the extra one we're doing... I don't know what the internet situation is like when we get We're there. Gonna so we try. may or we may not do it. Hopefully one. by the time you're seeing this, there was a live on Sunday in the right. car. That is our plan. Right. But we'll see. Yeah. So we're really enjoying the whole June challenge though. Can I'm loving we it. have a little bit more of a hint what's going on in July? Well, in July, I can I can give you a full blown disclosure. Okay. The Chop Challenge is back. Oh. We're bringing back particular ingredients, a special secret ingredient for every single day of July, but I need your help. Put in the comments and in our Facebook family group, what are your suggestions for a, a protein source for the CHOP Challenge? And whatever they put in the comments, we're gonna put in the CHOP Challenge. We may use. I wanna put that right out there right now. Cause if someone Whatever. says iguana meat, I'm not doing that. Frog legs? Frog legs, I, I'm gonna tell liver. you. Maybe liver. I think frog legs is a good one. I would eat liver. I think liver we should do frog legs. Way before I'll eat frog legs. Frog legs taste better than liver. Fortunately, I am in charge of the calendar. <laughs> Yeah, I knew I should have taught you how to run the Facebook group and how to run the website. I love this. So, so is that it? All we're doing is chop challenge for the month of July, right? We're going to kind of take some time off and just have a fun chop, chop challenge. Now, again, the chop challenge, it's not mandatory. No. It's just like, hey, are you kind of bored? Are, are you eating ground beef and eggs every single day? Do you want to find something? I sound like an infomercial. You do. Do you want to find something different? Well, Keto, maybe wow. you want to participate in the chop challenge. Now, I did want to mention real quick before we move on. If, if you are a member of the Chow Club, you know, the monthly box where you get that monthly box early. Why is there no members only jacket for this? That would be really cool. 
That's a my, good idea. Like, hey, my Miriam, dad was the last member. Swag for next month, like a members only jacket. He had a say keto chow. He had a a gray members only jacket, and I don't ever remember it being like super cool. But he thought it was cool. He was like way into it. <laughs> Can I get back into this? Okay, so if you are a Chow Club member, just announced, there is Pina Colada. It is a brand new flavor. It is available for you to order right now if you are a Chow Club member. Use the link down below. I do not believe it's going to give you a discount because it's very, very limited. Super limited. But it will help support the channel if you use the link down below. So they said that they don't know how many they're going to have. It's they may run out quickly. Pineapple-y. I like it. I like it. Yeah, I really like it. It's it's more on the pineapple side of a pina colada than the coconut side. Yeah. Like, I at least get pineapple more than coconut. But you I get like coconut, that. but I think pineapple kind of comes through more. Well, and I think that you could use coconut oil as the fat source. Right. And I think that would taste delicious because you've got a good pineapple base. I'm thinking half this, half orange cream. Mm. That would make a tremendous tropical drink. That is a tropical drink. I mean, so. this is the perfect timing for this. So now we did find out it is coming available to everybody else. I don't know when. All I know time. is it's soon. It will be available to everybody, but they're extremely limited. So when they are available, make sure you jump on it. If you and again, would, use the link down below. If you want out. them. Yeah, it, yeah, obviously, if you don't like pina colada, don't We're not just go collecting. get pina colada. <laughs> Also, for you peaches and cream fans, it's available in big bags now, but yep. it is only available right now right. for people now, who now. are like Chow Club members. So yes. if you're not a Chow Club member, you're going to have to wait. I'm sure it's going up for sale. I don't know. They haven't told me. Eventually. But I do know that right now, if you are a Chow Club member, you can go get this in big bags. Again, link is down below in the description. Love it. So... Um, yeah, this week has been an interesting week. It kind of like flew by. It definitely did. We've had lots of, I've had lots of meetings this week. This has been a very like meeting heavy week, mm -hmm. but that's okay. Cause it's, it's cool, right? Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. I like having different things every week. What are you looking at? Huh? What are you looking at? I was looking at your face because you- <laughs> I don't have a cut on my head. You do not, no, but you I just have, like hats. you have a cut on- your face though this this right here yeah yeah was that a kiss from an animal it, it was a kiss unfortunately it wasn't a kiss from my wife although i'd be really Sorry. upset if my wife gave me this kiss right so i was outside the other day and uh when we put the refrigerator the, the old refrigerator to the outside i somehow grayson's cage got turned grayson yeah. always faced the door and right. now he's facing out and i don't know it just puts him in a position that he doesn't like and I was changing his water. He gets very mad. And he got very upset with me for having my hands inside of his cage. He, he's very protective of his cage. When he's off of his cage, he, he is the greatest Anybody bird. can pick Goes him to up. to anybody. But his cage, that's his domain. And you cannot put your hand in his cage or even try to get him out of his cage. Like, he's just not he's having it. He's got to come out it. when on he's his ready. Own, on his own. Just like all the rest of it. I'll do it when I'm ready. When I'm good and ready. And so he decided, let me walk over and give daddy a kiss. And grab. Yeah. And I mean grabbed and would not let go. Like that that was definitely stitches. It definitely could have used some stitches. It is painful. I didn't realize how bad it was until bites. I shaved some of the hair away. I know. <laughs> and then I, but I it's guess. not on my head. Trying to be matchy-matchy near your mouth area, I boiled some water for some hot tea okay. and made hot tea. This is why I can't, me and You're tea. You're not allowed to cook. Well, no, well, me and tea, we don't get along. Stick with coffee. Coffee never hurts me like this. But I had some tea and I burnt my lip. It took like the skin off in two places. How did tea. you do that? This is hot tea. How this is you, why you stick with coffee. <laughs> okay. So yeah, we we had the whole situation with the bird. We got everything ready. We're going camping this week. I'm excited because we've got some great food. I have meal prepped like a whole bunch of chicken breasts because Yum. we've been way into salads lately. It's because it's so hot that yeah. sometimes even a heavy food, like I, I'm just not interested. Yeah. I mean, I like when we fry up cheese and I like cauliflower rice, but right now everything feels very heavy. So I like the cold lettuce yeah. and the cold cucumbers with my 
like chicken or beef or whatever we do. Now our salad consists of go buy like the spring mix. Yeah. Throw that on a plate Super and then easy. put chicken or hamburger or something on top of it. There's no once in a blue moon cucumbers, but there's no onions or tomatoes or carrots. It's literally a bed of lettuce with some food on top. But I think I'm loving it. I don't know if we're more into the salad thing right now because you're saying it's hot and you don't want anything heavy. Or if it's because I made that honey mustard sauce oh, that I yeah. threw together. That, well, and it, the salad becomes a conveyance for that honey mustard sauce. Yeah, I, I don't know. One day I was just in here like, I really would like some honey mustard. What do I have in the kitchen that I could mix together? And so I literally took yogurt and Dijon mustard with a couple of drops of sucralose and mixed it together. And Freaking it is like delicious. amazing. Yes. It is amazing. Super easy. So how? what is the ratio? It's like equal parts yogurt like doing, to mustard about vicinity? I, I haven't gotten so far as doing a recipe because like what I'm doing, it is, it is so good that I won't even make a batch of it. Because if I make a batch of it, like what happens is, is I just want more. And We're heavy handed with condiments. And I want more. So we're taking the little condiment cups and I put just enough in there for you. And then I do a separate one just enough for me. And when it's gone, it's gone. It's gone. And there is no more like, hey, I'll, let me go back to the kitchen and get some more dressing. Not a bad policy for dealing with condiments. Because, Except for it's a pain. But they can get away from you. Yeah. So I think it's a good policy for anybody. And I'd love to know down in the comments, what is your favorite condiment and how do you make sure that you get a decent amount but like don't overdo it? So I'll give you my two favorite condiments that I'm not allowed to have. Okay. Well, I'm allowed to have the are keto to? versions, but like I really have to stop myself and that is pancake syrup. I mean, even the keto ones. Yeah. Um, because like just what a serving size is is just not enough for me. I, I, I want to douse it. When you say that it's like a tablespoon or two tablespoons, even on the label, when it says it like that is how You're much. You're like, really? It's, 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 yeah. Have you ever just used one tablespoon? It's like peanut butter. Like what is a serving of peanut butter? It's like two tablespoons. But not a heaping like, tablespoon. Who's <laughs> ever made a sandwich with two tablespoons? Right. Right? No. Like, I would say when I used to make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, because peanut butter and jelly is awesome. Right, Miriam? Uh, I would probably say that my peanut butter and jelly sandwiches had three to four servings of peanut butter. Oh, easily. And then, this was bad, I did like a triple decker. So I would do peanut butter and then I would do jelly. Then I would do cream cheese. Oh my lord. Don't knock it. Like peanut butter and cream cheese is amazing. Is it? It really is well, amazing. Well, you can still have that. I n no, I can't because a serving of peanut butter is just not enough. So we have peanut butter. That's not a condiment. But yeah, absolutely cannot do like the whole pancake syrup. Like because I'm just like, that jar's got 25 servings? No, it doesn't. It's got five servings <laughs> if you're lucky. Now, by the way, if you're interested, our favorite pancake syrup that we now use, it is a bit of, of a science project. It it's is. It's a bit chemically, but it's Walden Farms. It's it's good, but it's good enough. It's good enough. Yes. It's not great. Yeah. It's not it's not like how you remember it. It's not thick. And it's thicker than a lot of the other ones. It works with the pancakes, but you know, old time syrup used to be able to stand alone by itself. Right. If you just try that right out of the it's bottle, like, yeah. you know there's something off. Yeah, it's like getting, I don't know, stuff that you would have gotten at like a fast food restaurant yeah. or something like that. But the reason that we started using Walden Farms is it is a science project, but the science project isn't including a whole bunch of fibers. Right. So it is zero carb, in, according to the label. So I always counted. I figured we that I'm always doing butter. at least one carb per serving. But it's better than some of the other ones that are out there that are like 10 or 11 total carbs. And it drops down to like two or three carbs net. But it's got a bunch of syrups in there and they raise people's glucose. So I'd rather go with the science project when it comes to my syrup. We tried the peanut butter though. It was disgusting. It was. We tried all of the other edible. stuff. 
like the, the well, they have jellies too, and the jelly like, is like jello. It tastes like jello. Just make sugar free jello and put that on top of your peanut butter. It's That's got the like, same consistency too. It was horrifying. Like yeah. the orange marmalade was was orange jello. Yeah. Which is fine, except for you're expecting jelly in consistency and taste, and you're not getting that. You're yeah. getting orange jello, like right. in a jar. That's what it is. All of their stuff is science projects. I what mean, was your other condiment? You said you had a hard oh, time with ketchup. Yeah. Ketchup. Alternative sweets, we get No, sweets. I mean, there are plenty of ketchups out there that are very keto friendly. You have the alternative sweets is probably my favorite one. Spicy ketchup is um, the best. Yeah, their spicy ketchup is cocktail. amazing. It's like cocktail sauce. Yeah, and there's even some that you can buy in the store. I mean, I know that you have G. Hughes has one. Uh, there's that true made one that Anthony loves. It's made out of like vegetables. That right. one is really, really good. My problem is, again, I want more than a serving. Yeah. And I'm super heavy handed with it. Like I want ketchup on everything. I want ketchup on eggs, ketchup on my burger, Ew. ketchup with my sausage. I want ketchup on everything. Not me. I've never been a ketchup person. I've always been a mustard and mayonnaise person. So the condiment that I struggle with the most is definitely mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. And then my second love is your dressings, whether the blue cheese dressing, which we do have a recipe video for that. It's awesome. And um, this honey mustard that you're making, I, yeah. I just, but you know what? When we dispense it in the little right. snack dish, which I think we got on Amazon, the little individual. I buy them all the time. Yeah. You can get them on Amazon, cups. little restaurant supply stores. Perfect. I yeah. mean, and they, those things clean up really well. And I feel like I'm getting a decent serving, but I know that it's an appropriate serving. Yeah. Well, even when I fill that up, that's probably like a double to triple serving, but at least it's better than not having anything to measure it out. Me at. being alone with a squeeze bottle. Yeah. Not Great. And the thing, there's nothing wrong with eating any of these condiments if you're eating an appropriate amount. There are plenty of keto friendly condiments out there, but again, you got to remember serving sizes. Like you get into spices, right? And they say, well, there's zero carbs in this in a serving, but a serving is a quarter of a teaspoon. But who only uses a quarter of a teaspoon when they're cooking? Not me. So there's always carbs in there. So just, I kind of look at everything I have has got at least one carb. Even if the label says zero, unless it's something like beef or something like that, there's always a carb in it and it just helps me stay on track a little bit more. Yeah, you'll never be, sorry if you're more careful. Right, I mean, even like mayonnaise, nothing wrong with mayonnaise, except for you can way overdo the fat. If you start eating like three times more grams of fat than protein, you may start putting some weight back on, yeah. which is definitely possible on keto. Very true. Okay, let's do this. Let's take a quick commercial break. And then we're going to come back with all the different comments. What's in your coffee this morning? I don't have any coffee. What do you got? I got almond milk with perfect keto peanut butter collagen. Peanut I, butter. Yeah. I have black coffee. I didn't add nothing to my coffee, that honey. That tastes better though. Nothing, honey. Peanut butter collagen from Perfect Keto tastes really good. Shameless plug. There's a link down below for it. <laughs> it is good. It is really good. Okay, so this is the portion of Keto on the Couch where we like to celebrate our subscribers because that's what Keto on the Couch is about. It's all about our subscribers. And every week we like to go into our Facebook group and find somebody who's put up some kind of inspirational post, something that makes you go like, huh. Yeah, and they are our adjunct professor of the week. The Keto College Adjunct oh, Professor of the man. Week. man. Keto College Adjunct Professor of the Week. Okay, so this I mean, week's professor times. is Teresa. Hey, Teresa. Teresa said, don't trust the scale. That's good advice. Today, I noticed that the scale went up again, but I also noticed my measurements were going down. So I downloaded the data from my Renfo scale and found the following. Weight is up two pounds since April 1st. BMI is down 0.6. Total inches lost, 17.9. Yes, 17.9 inches lost in a little more than two months with a gain of two pounds. Wow. Don't trust the scale. Teresa, that is awesome. But it's, oh my gosh, it's almost like she really was talking to me like when she said, yes, 17.9. Because I was thinking, 17.9? Is that a typo? That's amazing. Thank you very much for that post because we constantly say it. The scale is, is the, the devil. devil. So thank you very much for that post. 
Okay, now we're going to move on to our subscriber of the week. Now, again, if you are not a member of our Facebook family group, go ahead and join. It's free. There's a link for it down below. <laughs> the reason we want you to go join is because there are thousands of people over there. Awesome people. Who are there to motivate you, to inspire you, to talk you out of the ditch when you fall in it. Yeah. And to celebrate all of your different wins. So they're sharing recipes and deals. So go ahead and join and leave your story because your story is going to impact somebody. I know we say this every week, and every week someone's like, you know, I'm finally after two years going to put my story in there. And yeah. then there's people like, oh my gosh, me too. It's huge. I mean, you are that unique key that is going to unlock somebody else's keto journey because right. they're going to see what you write and they're going to be like, I'm going to give this a try. Yeah, so it's really important that you share your story. It's not for content, it's for everybody else. And if you don't have a Facebook account, if you're not into Facebook, that's perfectly fine. You can send us an email at stories at twocrazyketos.com and we can put it on this way. Okay, let's get into the first one and it is Paul. Paul! Paul said, hey family, Time to chime in. Yay. Here's another one. Took a little while to get in here, right? He's awesome. He said, started keto at the beginning of this year, and I just reached the 50-pound mark of fat loss. My blood pressure is now pretty normal after clocking in at dangerous levels last year, and I am no longer pre-diabetic. That is awesome. I dug out the same shirt I'm wearing in the shark picture. Uh, creased as it is, Joe and Rachel have been so inspiring oh. and helpful during this journey. Cheers, family. Wow. What? Wow. Paula. Oh my gosh, that is awesome. What a difference, Paul. You look absolutely amazing. You look great. You really look so good. And as you're reading his comments, I'm listening to him in his voice though. In my mind, <laughs> it's going on and he has you such like that voice. a great accent. It's awesome. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, let's get into the next one. It is from Cindy. Hey, Cindy. Cindy said 365 days in the keto box. Happy anniversary. Scale victory, down 68.4 pounds. Wow. And I'm my lowest since having my first baby 37 years ago. Fantastic. Non-scale victories, new wardrobe, stamina to keep up with my grandkids, not keeping my arms folded in front of me every time yes. I sit down. Back to bike riding. Hello, spandex. Hello, spandex. And no guilt when I sit down to eat. Many thanks to Joe and Rachel and the 2KK family for sharing in the joy of that my is journey. Awesome. <gasps> Cindy! Oh my gracious girl, you look so stinking good. Oh, that's awesome. Congratulations. I and happy love anniversary. Seeing your reaction to people. Well, it's just, it's like a brand new life. Yeah. Right? It's just like you can see their life is beginning afresh, anew, and it's like every single day really truly is a blank page. You know, right. when we were heavy for so long, it almost felt like Groundhog Day. Right. Every day was just a repeat of all the things I can't do. All of the things that I'm daydreaming about, like going places and like enjoying myself and sitting down without crossing my arms, being able to cross my legs, being able to get up and down. Like those were just things that we used to daydream about. Right. Walking through a, a fun park. Yeah. You just thought about that. You never, I mean, it was a daydream. Yeah. It wasn't a possibility. And it's, so now it's just amazing. It's like the fantasy, right? Like what would you do if you won a million dollars? It was always for us like, what would you do if you weighed under 200 pounds? Yeah. Right? What What are you going to do? If you, like never going to be achievable, but. What is your first thing yeah. that you're going to do? Make plans because it's happening. Yeah. This is awesome. Okay. So the first comment from last week is from. Hoofing it. Hoofing it. Says, Three. I was with Joe on the calendar and the greeting card company days. Yeah. How like all those days are just created by greeting right. card companies. But you lost me on Prime Day. Uh-oh. I also appreciate this warning because that's going to explain why Brian will be telling me about more cool stuff than usual. Right? That is Rachel with me. So, like, I will come to Rachel and be like, wow, did you see the new F-350 since she's like, uh-oh, here we go. Walk away. He's buying a new car. Like, what? No, I, I, I just asked. I know you, right? That's <laughs> Well, fortunately. Anytime I tell you about something. With a big Ticket purchase like this, I know that we will talk more about that. But when it comes to Prime stuff and you're like, most of the things are under $100, it's like, uh-oh, yeah. <laughs> we in trouble. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, next one is from Parrothead Renee. Hey, Renee. She says, y'all act silly? What? I thought y'all acted like real normal caring humans. <laughs> Life is too short to be so dang serious about everything. That's kind of how we feel. Very true. I mean, I think that no day is complete without a hearty belly laugh. So if you haven't laughed yet, find a way to laugh. Sometimes I will look up something on YouTube, watch a particular show, have my kids tell me a, a joke, especially Caleb. Yeah. Caleb is a dad joke well <laughs> of inspiration for dad jokes. So like I will just go talk to them because my day's not complete without a laugh. That's, that's a good way to look at it. Uh, next one is from Marie. Hey, Marie. Marie said, OMG, your silliness is why I watch. Thanks. You guys are so real. I love Rachel's headband. I work with children and wear silly things. Please keep doing it. Favorite 80 movies was The Breakfast oh, Club. Oh, yeah. Yes, a cookbook would be great. I love the channel. Thanks, Marie. You are so encouraging. Yeah, oh my gosh. I love The Breakfast Club. That's one of my favorite movies. I love, I mean, did you see yourself in The Jock, in The Outcast, in like the, in, in the, in The Posh Girl, in, in I hope what, I was. were you an outsider? Like, what was your I, I was, distinction? I, I was the dork. Oh, so, oh, okay. Yeah. Like the, the little scrawny kid that's, yeah. That was, that was me. The nerdy kid. Yeah. I was definitely Ali Sheedy. I think really? I was like a little bit crazy on the outside. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> on wasn't. The outside. I wasn't Molly Ringwald. Like I wanted to be her. I, I kept thinking like if I could get myself together, like she was so put together. I was not. <laughs> okay, next one is from Dawn. Hey, Dawn. They say, I have mixed emotions about cookbooks. I have several, only use one to two recipes in each book. I just eat very simply. I love the recipes on the website so I can sort through and pick out the one or two that works for me. I like that too. I am kind of the same way on cookbooks, which is one of the reasons we've never really bothered with. People have been asking for a long time, can you do this with a cookbook? But my thing is, is like, it's already available on the internet. Like, we're already putting it there for you. I like just putting out stuff for free, just right. in case somebody will use it. Because I'm the same way. A lot of times it'll be like a couple, of, a handful of recipes. So right. hopefully, you know, when we do videos, people can kind of find their favorites. Yeah. And, you know, rewatch them. I do have a couple of cookbooks I like. But again, I'm the same way. It's like, yeah, like there's this great cookbook and I use three recipes in there. Like I think my favorite keto cookbook is actually Keto Made Easy. Like Keto Connect's first cookbook. They have lots of recipes Such in there that I like. Such a good variety. But still, I, I'd say I have maybe 10 of the recipes out of the whole book. And the rest of them are like, they're cool, but just nothing I want. I, I want the same thing all the time. Do like, you, give me the five or six things and let me rotate them every day. Do you have cookbooks in your house where like a several pages where you use the, the recipes all the time are just annihilated, like filthy with spots and grease stains all over them. And then the other pages in the book are completely pristine. Yeah. I would love to know too, what are cookbook recipes that you're like, you just flip through because you're not interested? What Got are pictures. like- the ones without pictures for you. Yeah. If it doesn't have a picture. Yeah, it's gotta have pictures. Okay. I don't want a cookbook without pictures. All right. I wanna see what it's supposed to look like, even though when I make it, it's not gonna look like that. Honestly, it's hard to get my attention with a dessert recipe. Really? Because I assume I'm not gonna make a lot of desserts because it's not it's it's not usually good for me. <laughs> so I will look at more of the entree things first. Okay. Uh, next one is from Pat. Hey, Pat. Sam's got rid of the fruit punch and the grape. They only get the seasonal brand grapefruit and orange mango. That's all they got there. I like fruit punch the best. I don't know where to go to get Zip Fizz. Help, Pat. Help me, too. <laughs> uh, best place is going to be on Amazon. I'll put a link down below. Fruit you punch can buy there? the individual flavors on Amazon. It is kind of a bummer, but I did notice that the grape one was also on clearance at Sam's Club. I just didn't buy any. Bye, bye, bye. But they, the other ones was like, yeah, the, the pineapple and stuff. I'm like, yeah, I, I just don't want that. The pina You like a flavor. limon. I love limon. But again, I get all those off of Amazon. I'm not, uh, what is it? Blueberry? Blue I don't raspberry? Like the blue I don't yeah, like that. I don't that, like that one either. That tastes very medicining to me. Don't like that one at all. So uh, next one is from Sandra. Hey, Sandra. Sandra said, where do you buy black stones? What model do you recommend for three in my family? Are they expensive and are they portable? Uh, what do you use to cook with? Propane. I've never used propane and I don't know how to use it. Thank you and enjoy all your videos. Okay. Thanks, Sandra. I'm going to go down this whole list. I'm going to leave it up here. Okay. Where do you buy Blackstone? Pretty much anywhere. Even Walmart. You can get them at Walmart. That's where we got the one from my mom. That's where we got um, the one we use in the RV. 
Um, you can buy them at, I believe, Home Depot Target. sells them. Target sells them. Amazon sells them. BJ sells them. Sam's Club has the members mark version, so it's not quite a Blackstone, but it's the same principle. It looks a lot like yeah. the Blackstone. But you can pretty much get them everywhere. Uh, Price-wise, okay, what model do you recommend for three in my family? I would say the 22, the 27, or the 36-inch one. I We started off in the RV, the original pop-up camper. We had a 17-inch one. I would never recommend that 17-inch one to anybody again. It was nice because it was small and it was cheap. You can Super get it for horrible. like 80 bucks. But... The problem is it's only got one burner, which is in the center. So you get a hot spot in the middle and the outside doesn't cook as much. Also, the grease trap, at least on the one that we had, was up in the front instead of in the back. So now you had this cup that had to slide in and it would miss. It wouldn't sit in there right. It was just a pain to clean. So the bigger ones, the 22, the 27, the, the newer 36s, the grease trap is in the back. And it just makes it easy because you scrape everything to the back. There's Push a thing it. hanging on the back and, and it's easy to clean. Um, so I the 22 inch one, we used it for Memorial Day. Yeah. And it was me and Rachel, John Paul and Michelle, Anthony, Sarah, Caleb. My mom. Your mom. My and then, nephews. And our two nephews. Becky. And Becky. And we were able to cook, I don't know how many burgers. I, I, I was doing like 12 at a time. And we cooked two big packages and chicken hot and hot dogs and sausage. sausage. And it was pretty good. Pretty much every, I mean, I had one big round. So that is a pretty decent size. 36 is really big. If you're going to do like an entire slab of bacon, that's good. I like the 36 because the way it moves around. But for just three people, I would go with the 22 or the one we bought my mom, which I believe is 27 inches. Well, and if portability is of importance to you, those are going to be more portable. The 22 inch one is probably a, the most portable. You can get it with or without a folding stand. You can get it with or without a cover. And they're going to range between $100 to $200, depending on what accessories you get with it. Um, what do you use to cook with it? You're going to use propane. Uh, if you get the smaller ones, they have those little side things. Don't use those. Go you get go a hose through, online. Yeah. I'll put a hose down below, and then you can hook it up to a regular propane thing. You go through those other little cans of propane so quickly. And it's a waste because you're not supposed to be refilling them. So Yeah. But as far as using propane, it's super easy. You literally turn it on, press the button, and it ignites, and then you just remember to turn it off. So super, super easy to use. You would really, really like it. Plus, you get to get a lot of the cooking out of the house. Uh, next one is from Blaine. Hey, Blaine. He says, I found that I was far more successful the first eight months on keto when I was not tracking. Tracking stresses me out. I found myself better able to just go meal by meal, day by day, allowing myself 30 total or net carbs in a day. Whole real foods. Get off your bum and move some, Blaine. That's so cute. I talk to myself the same way, Blaine. My two crazy kiddos family is important to me. The positive reinforcement of you guys has helped me not go too far into some very dark places. This has been a very disappointing week for me concerning another channel I used to follow and support. The creator has decided they are no longer going to do keto and have begun including the standard American diet foods on the channel. This is fine, I can avoid, avoid the sad foods, but when they and their spouse talk about how delicious the keto recipe is going to be when they eat it for dinner over pasta, I was heartbroken and felt betrayed. Thank you all for being supportive. Well, Blaine, thank you very much for supporting us. That's we love first of you. all. I love the standard addiction diet that he has in there. Oh, I read it like sad, like a sad American diet. I love that. That is perfect. But I can tell you that like I definitely like I get kind of obsessive about tracking. So I'm the same way. I'm like, I, I will track when I feel like I'm getting kind of off the rails and letting myself go a little too far, but I do better when I'm not tracking. When I track, I get obsessive with it, and then I start going, uh, I feel deprived. I will eat less food if I'm not tracking, but when I start tracking, I'll start being like, I, I feel like I should get more. Well, and for me, sometimes tracking, I am expecting because I'm doing everything that I'm perceiving perfectly, mm -hmm. then I also have in the same like side by side with the tracking is an expectation of a timeline right. of like when I'm going to see the ex success that I believe I should see in the time in which I believe that it should happen. So sometimes when my tracking extensively does not line up with 
my health results happening immediately, I get very upset with that and, right. and think to myself, like, what am I doing wrong? And then I, I get very angry because I'm like, I'm tracking though, I'm focused on this. Why isn't it happening in the time frame that I want it to? So right. sometimes it can be detrimental to me as well. Yeah, so the bottom line is when it comes to tracking, do what helps you. Everybody's different. Some people can't be successful at all without tracking. Right. And then there's other people that like tracking makes them go off the rails. Yeah. So, you have to do what helps you and don't worry about what everybody else says. It's good. Uh, next one is from Carol. Hey, Carol. Carol said, great new topics on how low carb or keto makes us feel. Good. After I gave up sugar and grains, I didn't have crying pity parties in the shower. I always wanted to know why I couldn't stay on a diet to lose weight. Yeah. My pity party stopped after I changed my eating. Been keto for five plus years. I've lost 40 pounds, dropped wow. three to four pant sizes. I started a size 16. Now pants are mostly 10 awesome. and a couple of eight. Uh, don't trust the number on the scale. I joined my daughter in February and started a private hit class. Wow. Um, I thought I'd give it a, a try for a month, but have improved so much, making my muscles stronger, that I'm going to keep doing this as long as I can. Awesome. I've always been a slow loser, but this is a life change, so I'm not discouraged. I'm 72. Wow. And I've never exercised much. The trainer gives me time to get my breath back between exercises. The class ages are ranging from 50 to 72. I'm the oldest. Look at you. I'm going to make a goal of 5,000 steps on a non-hit day, starting today. Great video, you guys. Carol, I am wow. so proud of you, first of wow. all. Thank you for sharing your story and your age because sometimes people are like, oh, well, I'm older than that. And, yeah. and sometimes, I mean, people are reading it and they're like, well, I'm 55, so, you know, you're in a different situation than me. No. Right. Carol is 72 years old and just getting started. Right. So I love the fact that you're sharing both of those pieces of information because just because I haven't traditionally been super active does not mean that I can't decide moving forward, I'm going to get a certain amount of steps in. Yeah. I love that. That's awesome. What a cool thing to do with your daughter too. I know. Uh, next one is from Loving It On Keto. Well, hello. So this is Wendy. Hi, Wendy. She said, I was actually raised to be an emotional eater. My mom and dad would say, eat, you'll feel better. Or they'd buy me a malt or a shake or ice cream after a dentist appointment or a doctor appointment if I needed to have a shot or work done. Yep. In order to make me feel better. We celebrated wins with food as well. Let's go get some ice cream for the job well done or for the win. Yeah. I've had to retrain my brain and give myself and my children other types of non-food related rewards. For me, it's maybe a new article of clothing or a new pair of shoes. Oh, I love her okay, shoes. Okay, I have a lot of shoes now. She has awesome shoes. Uh, or treat myself to a mani-pedi, a massage, or a spa day. Anything that is a treat but not food related. That is awesome. Wendy, we did the same exact thing. And I think it's because it's what we learn to yep. do also. And it is hard to, to retrain your brain. Also, mm -hmm. it takes a lot more effort. If I'm honest with myself, handing my kid a sleeve of cookies was way easier than saying, if you do well on this exam today, we're gonna go to the park and I'm going to be hot and sweaty and play with you outside and we're gonna have a whole afternoon. It's much easier just hand him a bag of Cheetos. Yeah, I mean, and we were so guilty of that. I mean, I look back now, but the bottom line is hindsight is twenty twenty. Yeah. But but we everything was revolved around food because that's how we were as well. I mean, we it's like, hey, if you get good grades, I'll take you out to McDonald's or I'll get you ice cream. If you like did a good job at something, let's go get something. Birthdays was like all you can eat places like CC's right. or something like that. So, yeah. you know, it's it's when you know better, you do better. And it's okay to spend some time discovering what is it that you actually like to do that's not related to food so that you can start, a, you know, putting rewards to that. Like Wendy's shoes. Now that you're gonna bring that up. Okay. Wendy, Harry, I have a favor to ask of the two of you. Do not listen to him. I know where this I is going. I have this favor. No. Please stop showing your no. shoes on your show videos. Show all the shoes, more shoes. Stop showing your shoes. Because every time you show your shoes, Rachel comes to me and starts looking for them on Amazon. Because they're awesome. Because sometimes you actually mention the name. If you're going to show the shoes, don't tell us what tell they us all are. Tell us the names. Because then what happens is she's like, can we go buy these now? Because they're magnificent. Wendy's got like awesome shoes. They're awesome. Let's move on. Seriously. Awesome. Next one is from Linda. Hey, Linda. Linda said, I have a question. 
I've been doing strict keto since my first order of Keto Chow arrived on the 28th of March. Nice. I don't know what I weighed before I started, but I estimate I've lost about 20 pounds and I've seen some great non-scale victories. Great job, Linda. I've been tracking my macros and just started intermittent fasting of 18.6 a week ago and I'm feeling great. I've been periodically testing with the Keto Mojo GK Plus, and today my ketones registered 0.4, blood glucose 112 at 7 a.m. on decaf tea and one drop of diluted sucralose. No carbs, no calories, two hours after arising. What could possibly have kicked me out of ketosis? Aww. And why is this blood glucose 112 fasting? Any ideas? Okay. Here's what's going on. There's something called the dawn phenomenon. When you get up in the morning, your glucose is going to be higher. Your ketones are going to be lower. It is the worst time to check it is in the morning, usually up till about 9 30, 10 o'clock. So what's cool about testing your glucose is you get to see what's going on. Yeah. But it's a picture in a moment. So if you think about if you have your 24 hour day, and you had no control over it. And at some point, sometime during the day, somebody walked up and snapped the picture. And then a week later, they came in, they showed you this picture and said, here's a picture of what you did on Monday last week. It wasn't the whole story though. Right, it was in that one moment. That's the problem with testing for glucose with a, st a prick meter because First of all, those meters are 20% accurate. They have a plus or minus of 20% accuracy. So while you're saying it could be, it was 112, it could be 82, yeah. 92. It could be 132. You just don't know. That's why you have to test multiple times. But also, what happened right before that? Okay, did you do any exercise? Did you have to jump up? Were you upset about something? Did you yell about something? Sometimes the prick itself. Did you get stressed about something? All of those things will elevate your glucose even if you don't eat. It's like exercise will elevate your glucose. Does that mean we shouldn't exercise? Just a side note, our parrot is that camera that snaps you and says this is, this is the entirety of your day because if I yell, say something crazy, that is the only thing that that parrot remembers. And for the next two weeks. Well, and longer than that, because he has captured my mom, what? When the kids are like going, you know, calling for me. Yeah. What? <laughs> I don't sound like that all the time, but the parrot makes me sound like that's how I sound all the time. Yeah, bottom line is don't worry about it. And as far as 0.4 ketones, you're in ketosis, okay? If you're not eating carbohydrates, you have no choice for your body, but to be burning fat for fuel. Right. High ketones in the blood does not equate to faster or more weight loss. It has nothing to do with it. Ketones is a byproduct of your body using the fat. Thomas DeLawler actually just put a great video up on this. I'm gonna leave a link for it right over Rachel's head. Go watch it and he talks about like, stop chasing these high ketone numbers. We've talked about it for a long time. If you've got a 0.4, you've still got ketones in your blood. Those are excess ketones. You're in ketosis. Don't worry about it. You're doing great. Let's go ahead and take a quick commercial break, and then we will come right back with some more comments. Editing Joe, please make sure that I change over the laundry because sometimes I forget, and in this South Florida heat, wet clothes don't smell good. Sounds good. Yeah. Thanks, Editing Joe. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's get into the next one. It's from Shauna. Hey, Shauna. She says, chronometer setting up my friend. She's accepted my request. How does she find my recipes? Okay, so the way you find recipes is by knowing the name of the recipe, but let's talk about chronometer. So if you're new to our channel, we always recommend chronometer for tracking your food, if you are tracking your food, because it's accurate or yeah. more accurate than any of the other ones. They usually verify what people input. Yeah, so you know, like a lot of times on the other ones, people will put in whatever they want or whatever they think, especially when it comes to carbs, they'll put in like net carbs. So they'll put like, hey, this erythritol has zero total carbs, but it doesn't. Or right. they'll say heavy whipping cream's got zero carbs, but it doesn't. Or they may say your coffee's got 25 total carbs. Are they just trying to like <laughs> aggravate my day? So we always recommend using Chronometer. Now Chronometer has two versions. They have a paid and a free version. If you become friends with someone, if you both have the paid version, you can swap recipes. You can swap recipes. 
Now, the unpaid version doesn't allow you to do that and also you have to get ads, but I like the paid version. It's not that much money. There's a link down below that'll save you a couple of bucks on it. And I, it's like, I don't know, like $35 a year or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but it's for the whole year. Yeah, and it really, I like what you get when it comes to the paid version. But let's go over how to find the recipe. You need to know what the name of the recipe is. So for example, if you're friends with Two Crazy Ketos. I hope you are. You would find us by going to, you would friend request two crazy ketos at gmail.com. So over here in Chronometer, you're going to have two different ways you can look up the recipes. The first way is by going to foods and then here's all the recipes and you can just type in whatever you want here. The other way is to go to your diary. So let's say you want to be able to, you know, actually add in a food. So you're going to go add food and then here is like all of my custom recipes. You can go to all that's going to have like everything I ever use and stuff. So what I want to do is type in 2KK and that is going to give you all of the two crazy ketos recipes. So you see how they all end in dash 2KK. Now what you need to know is if you're looking for a specific two crazy ketos one, you need to know exactly how we have it worded in chronometer. And the way you're going to know that is type the same name that we have on the recipe card. So for example, avocado oil mayo. So if I type in just, even though it's up on the top, avocado oil mayo, okay, you're gonna see how it's got all these other ones. Well, where it says dash 2KK, that is ours. So now I can click on that and I can put how many servings that I'm using in there. And that's how you're gonna do it. So even your friend, you have to know exactly how they have it named inside of Chronometer. Right. We tried to make it easy by putting dash 2KK. Now just be aware, if you type in 2KK and you're friends with other people who are also 2 Crazy Ketos followers, you're gonna get any recipe they put in where they labeled it as 2 Crazy Ketos. Yeah. So like you saw on one of them there, it said like 2KK pancakes. Right. That is not in my database. No. That is one of our friends in Chronometer has a recipe in their chronometer called 2KK Pancakes. And they may tweak things so it may be different. And so in that case, you'd have to refer back to our video if you're trying to make it exactly the way that we make it. Right, but you would only see that if you're friends with that person. Right. If you're only friends with us, you're only gonna see our database. Version. You only see the database of the people that you are friends with, not that just anybody has put out there. Yeah. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Next one's from Carla. Hey Carla. Carla said, huge non-scale victory today. My daughter and I went to our monthly huge flea market and Aww. I walked all afternoon without my rolling walker wow. that has a seat. Aww. We were there from 1230 to 1700, five, five? o'clock. Okay. I walked and I stood the entire time. I even walked up a steep incline to the restroom. First time in three years we've been going that I didn't take the walker. Number one. Hello, flea market day is like the coolest day ever. Like that is a great thing to do with your daughter. Like how fun and I'm super jealous because mm -hmm. I want to be at a flea market like right now. But, well not right now, I enjoy being doing okay. keto on the couch with you. But Thank I you. love flea markets, right? They're so fun. But that is exciting. Yeah. Not to, like to have walked the entire thing and not have sat down. Not I once. love those kind of non scale victories where you're able to like put away your crutches or not need a walker or not need insulin or not have to take, you know, like cholesterol medication anymore. Like, yeah. Those to me are better than the weight loss victories. You feel it because you've been through it. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Tim. Hey Tim, he says, for anyone using a CGM, I just got mine yesterday and have noticed a few spikes in blood glucose not associated with food or drink. Yesterday afternoon at work, I was staying in the lower 80s and by the time I was driving home, it was down to 67. I took my dogs for a walk and checked it and it jumped to 98. Then this morning, I woke up to my reader beeping because I was down to 60. I got up after a few minutes and walked to the bathroom and checked it again because I'm being obsessive, <laughs> and it doubled to 120 with no food or drink at all. Does anyone else have spikes like this just for mild activity? Yep. Also, tried a few things to see how it affected blood glucose. Flavored water with one gram of sucralose caused a 25-point spike. Diet Dr. Pepper and blood glucose started going down. Bang drink and no change. I'm carnivore except for my fluid because I get bored with only water. I won't drink the flavored water anymore, but we'll still have my diet Dr. Pepper and bangs occasionally now. Okay, um, real quick to talk about, first of all, if you don't know what a CGM is, it's a continuous glucose monitor. Uh, we actually have a company that we work with. There's a link for it down below and you can get a discount when you use that link in our coupon code. You can also go to your doctor and get a prescription for it. It just depends on your doctor if he's willing to give you a prescription. Another whole video on that. Right. Uh, but 
it is completely normal. That's why we like CGMs, because like we were saying earlier, when you prick yourself, you know, with the blood test, you're getting that snapshot, whereas the CGM gives you the whole day. Right. You can look at trends. But that's how your body is designed. It will create glucose when it needs it, and it can create it from fat or protein or muscle. It will make it when it needs it. It's its survival mode. And it's completely normal. Like if you're exercising, your glucose to go up. When you get up in the middle of the night, your glucose is going to go up. If you get angry, your glucose is going to go up. Don't worry about it too much. It's just part of it. But the, the thing is you're looking at the trends and where does it stay? How long does it stay up there and that kind of stuff. When it comes to the food, I'd actually be shocked if the sucralose caused that spike. Because doesn't Bang have sucralose? Bang has sucralose in it as well. So you have to look at everything else there too. So when you're measuring with a CGM, that actually is showing you what happened in your blood about 15 to 30 minutes prior. So if you prick your finger and let's say your glucose is 80 and it was 90, that's not gonna be reflected usually in the CGM for another 15 to 30 minutes. So if you eat something and then you wanna test it with the CGM, you wanna check it about an hour later. But if you check it, let's say it went up 25 points. Mm -hmm. And then five minutes later, you checked it and it was back down. That most likely had nothing to do with the food you ate. So sometimes, I mean, what you're saying is absolutely true. Because I'm thinking about one major spike that I had that had absolutely nothing to do with food. It was sheer panic. And right. that was, I was taking Tab for a walk. And I, she's a horse. Okay. She is a giant it's 110 animal. pounds. Okay. So when she goes number two, um, if people even see me near their yard, they start to freak out a little bit because they just know this horse is about to dump in my in my you know yard. And of course, I always have a bag, but it's not even like one of those little bags. I bring like a giant Walmart bag because again, I'm traveling with a horse. So I went on a walk and I only brought one bag because she rarely goes number two two times. Right. So we're walking and I've got the one bag that's like full. And we're just like walking around and she goes again. And I'm like, oh no, what am I gonna do? I only have one bag and I can't go back in this one, it's full. So I am freaking out thinking about, we're gonna race home, I need to get another bag and come back here. But what if the person that's living in it's this nice. house sees that I have allowed this dog to like poop in their yard and then I've left? Like I am coming back with a bag. But it was hilarious because I did happen to check my CGM when I got home because I thought, man, I feel stressed out. And Lord, it was through the roof. It had nothing to do with what I was you eating. Hadn't even eaten. It was sheer panic. Yeah. So all of that stuff can raise the CGMs. So don't worry about it too much. But yeah. it's fun to see like what actually affects it and what doesn't. Our uh, next one is from Bobby. Hey, Bobby. Bobby said, I need some help. I just made my first two days of keto chow, Yay. but I would like to have one in an hour or so. How long should I leave it in the freezer before it'll be good and cold so I can drink one? I'm hungry. Aw, how cute. Uh, you can drink it right away. You know, they say the best flavor is going to come after about 30 minutes. But if it's been an hour, what I would do, and we do this all the time, is if we're making an ice cream, it's always made right away anyway. But just take two or three ice cubes, throw it in the blender, and oh, yeah. just blend it all up and it just make it part of the water. It won't dilute it. It won't dilute it. You'll be good. Uh, next one is from Lisa. Hey, Lisa. She says, what's the difference between whey protein and regular protein? Which is better for you? Thanks. Okay, whey protein is protein. Okay, so you have whey protein, you have beef protein. So whey protein comes from milk. So when you look at protein powders, you're gonna see like whey protein, casein protein, milk protein isolate, beef protein, pea protein. So some people like whey protein, some people like casein protein. What it is is whey protein breaks down much quicker, like within an hour, and it helps with amino acids more. Casein protein takes a lot longer, like three or four hours to break down and start helping with the amino acids. Both are good, okay, mm -hmm. because you know, you the, the casein will help with your muscle recovery and building later, but the whey is helping right away. Milk protein isolate, pretty much like a combination of both. So both of those, whey and casein, are coming from a milk protein, whereas milk protein isolate is basically both of them combined. Right. Which is, I think, one of the reasons why Keto Chow uses it. Now, mm -hmm. if you don't like any kind of milk protein, you don't want whey protein, you don't want casein and you don't want milk protein isolate. That's where you're looking for a beef protein 
or for some reason, some people like pea proteins and things like that. Yeah, just w not our favorite. Not our favorite. A little too grainy for yeah. me. Yeah. And it's usually not a complete protein unless it's coming from soy. Soy is a complete protein, but a lot of the other pea proteins, not so much. Uh, next one's from Marie. Hey Marie, she says, okay, what's up? I have been keto for almost a year and carnivores since February, and I've been having non-keto cravings this week. I haven't given in to the cravings, but it's annoying. Will the cravings ever go completely away? Um, I would have to say some of it has to do with the seasons and what you're doing, because sometimes I find that there is still some emotional attachment to, to people and places and times of the year and things that we celebrate. And, and that's almost like the last little roots that, that don't want to get plucked up because right. we have an emotional attachment to that particular food item. Yeah, I think it comes down to the fact that it's different for everybody. Like me, I really do not get cravings for non-keto food. I feel like everything that I do like, there is an alternative like pizza, or if you want a cupcake or something like that. Now, Rachel, you say sometimes like, if I was gonna have anything, I would have a pizza, right? Yeah. So everybody is different. I think your nail though, it comes down to emotion. Some of it comes down to mind over matter. And some of it just comes down to just sure, like the longer you do this, the more it goes away. I mean, I'm in four years now, so I don't have nearly as many cravings as somebody who may be doing this for six months. Well, and just like you said with, with me thinking, like if I ever went off keto, like my mind goes to pizza. Why do you think my mind goes to pizza? Because pizza is associated with a lot of happy things in my life. Those were like your sleepovers with your friends and going out with your pals from high school. Like there's a lot of fun things that we celebrate with pizza. Usually it was pizza that you would get, you know, a free pizza for behaving in school or right. getting good grades. That was like a reward you get. So I don't think that it is as much that I, I miss regular pizza crust as I miss the places and people that I enjoyed pizza with and the moments in my life. That's good. Okay, next one is from Bobby. Hey, Bobby. Bobby said, I just saw there's only one recipe in the files for this group. Kind of Are, strange for me to be in a group. Oh, the Crazy Keto's family? Yeah, yeah, and not files. Anyway, I saw a recipe for Becky's Keto Jambalaya. However, there is not information on carbs per serving. Can someone get me this information? Aw. Okay, so as far as files in our Facebook group, we don't put them there intentionally. Yeah, because we have a website, and you can, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where all of our recipes will be. You can just go to the recipes yeah. tab. Yeah, and then every day, Rachel actually posts daily ones on Instagram and on our website, on our main page. Those you can find by going to our Instagram, and we're working on having another place to find them on our website, but they're not in the recipe cards right now. Now, our recipes on the recipe page will all have the nutrition information down on the bottom, but we always say don't use that. Yeah. That's why we've gotten away from having it actually inside of the video because it comes down to everybody uses different ingredients. Right, and when you tweak it a little bit, it can make all the difference in the world. I mean, if we are making like a casserole with hot dogs and you use a different sausage or hot dog brand than we use, you're gonna have a different result as far as like the carb counts it goes. Yeah. So that's why we don't have that there. And also, by the way, the other reason we don't have files in there is it's to protect you. Yeah. You know, we're only two people. We have a couple of awesome moderators but the less that we allow put into things like files and stuff like that, the less that we have to like try to worry like, hey, is there something there that could trigger someone? And right. we want it to be a safe place. So that's why we don't allow like live streaming. We only allow very few people to actually post other video content in there. There's no multi-level marketing. You know, all of that is to protect you. And if you start putting a bunch of recipes that we have not previewed, I don't even know if they're keto or not. And I don't want somebody to be using that going like, hey, Two Crazy Ketos right. has a recipe here and it's calling for five cups of ground wheat flour. Right, so I mean, it's always a good practice no matter what to just take that extra step and put it into Chronometer, yeah. put it into you know your, your tracking app that you're using and that way you will know precisely whether we say it or not, like what is the actual, you know, macros in that yeah. dish. And again, we're putting it on our recipe cards and I say don't trust us. And if I'm gonna tell you don't trust us, don't trust somebody else. So right. I've seen lots of recipes where somebody said, this has three net carbs, but when I put it in the chronometer, 
it was like 27 total carbs and 16 net carbs. So, yeah. you know, you have to be careful. And, and the best thing to do is do your own diligence. Yeah, because portions make a difference too. Yeah. So like we, we will cut up a casserole or something, but you may have a different amount yeah. that you get out of it. So we have one more. It's from Greg. Hey, Greg. Greg said, once upon a time, there was this guy that was really overweight, highest weight around 278, had type two diabetes, A1C around 6.5 to seven, high blood pressure, sleep apnea, bad sinusitis. He retired in January of 2020, not by choice, but it ended up being the best thing that could have happened to him and decided he wasn't going to go through uh, the retirement fat, sick, and lazy. That's awesome. He started doing some research and came across low carb, high fat way of eating and said to himself, what the heck? You tried everything else. That's what I did. Right. What the heck? So on June 7, 2020, the journey began. Started with a weight of 261 and by October was down 50 wow. pounds. Wow. Uh, when he went to the doctor, she he couldn't believe the change. His A1C was down to 5.2 with still some metformin. Wow. Uh, stopped taking it two months prior in the mix. So we did another test three months later and A1C was 5.7. Wow. The rest of the blood work was good. The lowest weight to date has been 201, a 60, 60 pound pounds. loss. He's off meds and doesn't use a CPAP anymore. He has way more energy and moves every chance he gets. I think this is Greg he's if talking about. If you haven't figured it out, this story is about me. I started this at the age of 63. I'm now 64. It's weird to think I have to sign up for Medicare at the end of the year. <laughs> As most people say, don't go by the scale, but right. watch the changes that happen to you. My non-scale victory is my belt. Yep. I've punched one hole in it so far, and I'm getting ready to punch another one soon. The bottom line for me is this way of living is I dr uh, I've drank the Kool-Aid, sugar-free, of course. Sugar-free. And I'm in it to win it. Pick one is my gray shirt is me at 50. Pick two, blue shirt at 53. Pick three, red shirt at 64. I cannot wait to see this. What? What? Oh my God. You look like the same person. You do not. Greg, they are never going to believe you when it's time for Social Security. No. They're going to be like, no, and you I'm look sorry. 10 years younger. You so absolutely do. Going back to those pictures, like, so wow. the, pick, the middle pick, he's 53 and he's 64 in the other one. Oh my God. Like, gosh. wow, he looks 10 years younger when he's 64. You look like a baby man. They're never going to give you no Social Security. <laughs> You, you're too young. Well, that is the end of this week's Keto on the Couch. And just in time because I'm going to go jump in a raft and go down the river. Is that what you think you're doing right now? Because I think that you are getting me another cup of coffee right now. Okay. Well, we'll do that and then we'll go get in the river. Okay. If you like seeing videos like this, check out some of the other Keto on the Couch videos because there are 117 of them. And I have them linked right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I've linked right over here. Whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to Until it. Until next time, bye. bye.